Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're going to have a look at the X Particles flocking system to make some cool flying paper planes. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D and we've got our little paper plane and our balloon. You can get these by downloading the project file below. We don't need the balloon just yet, so let's hide that guy. You can do that by double clicking here while holding Alt and that'll put the little red stop lights on. Next, let's bring in a camera up here. We'll click here and make that active. Then we'll come down here and zero out the position and rotation. And let's pull back a bit in the Z axis so we can see our whole scene. Now, because we're dealing with particle simulations, we'll probably want a few more frames to work with. So let's come down here and give our scene 500. Now it's time to bring in some X particles. Let's come up here and grab an XP system. You probably already know that straight out of the box, if you hit play, nothing will happen. And that's because we need to add an emitter first. So let's come up here and click on emitters. And down here under the objects tab, let's hit create emitter. And if we hit play now, we've got some particles, but they're going the wrong direction. We want them coming in from the side. So let's spin our emitter around and move it over to the left. Okay, let's hit play again. That's looking better. Now we need to tweak some of these settings up in our emitter. Each one of our particles will eventually be a paper plane. And by the looks of that, there's way too many. So let's come over to emission and we'll bring that way down from 2 million to maybe a thousand for now. Let's go and hit play again and see how that looks. Right, there's a lot less, but there's still too much. And I have a feeling that's got something to do with birth rate. So let's come over here and bring that down to 10 and we'll play that back. It might be a bit hard to see, but we definitely have less particles now. Okay, let's turn these particles into paper planes. Let's come up here to generators and down here we'll grab a generator. All right, first we need to tell it which emitter to use. So we'll grab our emitter and put him into here. And then all we need to do is grab our paper plane and we'll make that a child of our generator. And that happens pretty instantly. Although if we play that back, you'll see that they're all facing the wrong way. But that's easy to fix. If we go back up to our emitter and over in the extended data tab, we'll stick on use rotation and we'll set the rotation mode to tangential. It looks like nothing's happened, but if we rewind and play, you can see that's working quite nicely for us now. The only problem is these planes just keep coming and we just want to work with a small group of them. So let's go and check out our emission again. And you can see here it's set to emit at all frames which is why they just keep on spawning. If we turn that off, you can see now they'll stop emitting after frame 72. And now if we play that back, when it gets to frame 72, there shouldn't be any more planes. And now we have our little cluster of paper planes. So let's get these guys flocking. Let's come up to modifiers and under motion modifiers, we'll grab flocking. So straight out of the box, we get this effect which is kind of boring. Because they're all flying in a straight line, the flocking effect isn't very interesting just yet. We need to figure out a way to control the direction these planes are traveling in. Luckily in X particles, we've got a lot of options to control the motion of particles. But the one I ended up using, I will show you right now. Let's come up to modifiers and under motion modifiers, we'll grab an attractor. So basically we can move this wherever we want and our flock will fly towards it. Let's check it out. That's looking better. The cool thing about this as well is that it's fully interactive. If we move this around, you can see that everything updates on the fly. So you can get some really cool organic motion here. So you could keyframe this or have it travel along a spline, but I'm gonna show you a little trick to make the animation very quick and easy. You may or may not have heard of this little tool in Cinema 4D called Cappuccino. You can find it up here under character, manager, and there it is. So basically what this is going to allow us to do is control our flock with our mouse. Cappuccino can record motion on the fly and convert it to keyframes for us. Let me show you how that works. Firstly, let's go back to the first frame and we'll have a look at this panel here. We're gonna be moving our attractor, but not scaling or rotating it. So let's turn those off so we only record position information. Everything else is fine for now. So let's start recording by hitting this button. It won't actually begin recording until we start making some movement. So we'll grab our emitter, which is still selected here, and we'll start moving it around and our flock should follow nicely. 
You can see on our trail here, all these dots represent the keyframes that we're recording. We'll carry on moving this around until we run out of frames. Let's just try to make the animation as interesting as we can. Okay, that automatically stops when we get to the end of the timeline and you can see all the keyframes baked in now. And if we rewind, there's our animation. It is a little bit messy at this stage because we have a keyframe pretty much on every frame. So what I like to do now is just clean this up a little bit. So we don't need the cappuccino panel open anymore. Let's close that up and we'll right click on our attractor and come down to show F curves. So now you can see all the keyframes for our X, Y and Z positions. And we didn't actually move it in the Z direction. So we really don't need these keyframes at all. So we'll come over here and click on Z and under the F curve menu, we'll turn off show all tracks. So we're just left with our Z axis. Then we'll just go edit and delete. Then we'll grab our X and Y positions and we want to smooth these keyframes out and hopefully have a lot less of them to work with. So with them all selected, we'll come up to functions and we'll grab the key reducer. Now, all we have to do is start sliding this across and instantly you'll see we've got some nice curves in there and a lot less keys. So this step isn't completely necessary, but if you wanted to fine tune your animation, it's gonna be a lot easier with these simplified curves. So let's have a look what we've got. I'm pretty happy with our animation for now. Let's bring our balloon back in and I'll show you how to make our particles avoid objects. So back over here, we'll hold Alt and click on the stoplights to make it visible again. And let's just move it into the path of our flock of paper planes. About there should do it. Then back to our modifiers and under motion modifiers again, you probably guessed it, we're gonna bring in an avoid. Probably a good idea to mention that Cinema 4D processes things from top to bottom. So we wanna make sure we've got these in the right order. Let's put XP flock at the top, then the attractor and then our avoid. It probably doesn't matter too much in a simple system like this, but sometimes you can get some pretty strange results. Right, now we need to tell our particles which object to avoid. Let's grab our balloon and chuck it in here. Then we'll go and hit play and see what happens. As you can see, it's pretty much as easy as that. When the paper planes get close to the balloon, they try to fly around it, but keep heading towards our attractor. And of course, there's plenty of options in X-Particles to refine this. If you want them to stay further away from an object, all you need to do is come down to the object shell, make that a bit bigger, let's say 10. And in theory, our plane shouldn't get quite as close anymore. Might be a bit hard to see there. Let's try to get this in the way. And there you go. Cool. One thing though, I don't really like how they're clustering so close, but we can change that up in the XP flock. All we have to do is put our separation strength up a bit. Let's say 25 and the separation distance, let's put that at 230 centimeters. And we'll play that back. And that's looking much better. You might still get some inner penetration and some of your particles might do some weird stuff but I'll show you a little trick how to edit your particles. For example, I'm not too sure what this guy's up to, but we can easily get rid of him. All you have to do is come back to the XP emitter and under the editing tab, we'll enable that and switch over to point mode. And you'll see each one of these particles is represented by a little point. And if we click that and press delete, he's gone. And we can play that back and not have to worry about that crazy guy. So now it's just a matter of getting rid of the ones you don't want and fine tuning some of the animation. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below if you wanna save a bit of time and you can get a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section below or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.